Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. And uh, some warnings out uh, for tonight and uh, actually through Saturday night here, St. Lawrence Island, Western Seward Peninsula, winter storm warnings, and also for uh, snow and blowing snow, some of which will be on the heavy side here through the red shaded area, especially on the southern slopes of the Brooks Range here, all the way over to Arctic Village in, in that area but uh, looking for anywhere from 8 to 18 inches or so, give or take here for snowfall up, and, up through tomorrow night. And with the gusty winds, most of the blowing snow will be taking place back to the northwest and then uh, sort of off to the east there into the Brooks Range. Otherwise, uh, same pattern up there on the western Arctic coast, yellow areas, uh, winter weather advisories uh, for conditions that uh, won't be as bad as they will be in the red shaded areas. And all that includes Fort Yukon, Central Tanana Valley, back in toward uh, Unalakleet there, Seward Peninsula. And then the wind advisory here for the uh, eastern Alaska range, west of the Toke Cutoff. Uh, gusty winds coming into the picture there as the uh, system rolls on in. Otherwise, for yesterday, we had uh, this thing moving eastward from south central Alaska, pushing on east. That brought uh, the snow in again uh, late last night, early tomorrow, breaking out behind it and mostly cloudy up through areas of the interior. Next uh, big storm centered way out there uh, between Shimia and the Commodorskis. Front uh, past ADAC, not quite to Shimia at 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon, but a lot of uh, thick cirrus moving into the southwest coast on up toward the Bering Strait with the main precipitation producing stuff back out to the west. And we'll see, uh, roll that by once again for yesterday. Again, everything here progressing east to west, but uh, high pressure building in advance of that storm. Uh, sort of keeping it out there to the west today, but a system developing here, a wave on the frontal boundary, rolling northward right up the coastline, strong winds along the southwest coast today, actually pushing that front inland uh, with that uh, northwest wind coming in on the back side of the system there and then back down across the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians for the front. And again, uh, pretty strong winds with that, uh, 40 to 60 miles per hour, and a big push of warm air, big rise in temperatures today across much of the interior on back out to the west with uh, mixed precipitation now showing up uh, just about to the Seward Peninsula, but the cold air still uh, locked in over St. Lawrence Island, a break here from the Perloffs on down into the central Aleutians, just some scattered showers, Adak and Atka becoming a little more prevalent, uh, but still not too bad out towards Shimia. Colder temperatures though out there rotating in from the northwest, so uh, snow showers, if any occurred out there at all, they would have been in the form of snow. Otherwise off to the east, uh, just uh, clouds coming into south central Alaska today, on down to Kodiak Island. And then the interior also seeing just mid and high level clouds coming across, uh, mostly fair down here across the southeast coast and moisture, southern Prince of Wales Island into Dixon entrance. And rolling that through once again, as you can see this uh, wave scooting up the coast there and uh, that pushing the frontal boundary inland and that's gonna continue to be the pattern gradually moving east as the upper level ridge breaks down. On the chart, we've got a 990 nine millibar low right there near St. Lawrence Island today or just to the east, keeping them in the cold air, but warm air surging northward here. 
and uh, rain actually a little farther north this afternoon here, late this afternoon, more into the Yukon Delta. In fact, almost all the way up to the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula or of Norton Sound this afternoon. Otherwise, the heavy snow and blowing snow, Seward Peninsula, eastward across the Brooks Range, that warm front roughly in this position. Actually, I think it was maybe farther south would be the true location of that warm front, but uh, wind, snow, blowing snow, pretty much the rule there. Our heaviest back here to the west, lighter off to the east, much lighter off to the east. And the Arctic coast, mostly dry, uh, increasing east winds from the central coast on over to Point Lay. Very windy afternoon, snow blowing snow all across uh, Kotzebue Sound into the Seward Peninsula. Much drier, nicer conditions here over south central Alaska. Just an increase in the cloudiness. A few showers showing up possibly here along the uh, Aleutian Range, but the main rain band back with the front across the Alaska Peninsula. Nice conditions, southwest uh, wind there for the Perbloffs. Turn westerly for the Aleutians with a few scattered rain or snow showers with the uh, strongest winds now with the main low center north of the Aleutian chain on out to the west. And for tonight, uh, that system drives right up to the western north slope, uh, 1,004 millibars, areas of snow and blowing snow now mostly here for the uh, central eastern Brooks Range area, Arctic coast, lighter winds coming into the picture for the uh, northwest coastal areas, but uh, southwest flow Keeping it uh, occasionally snowy there for St. Lawrence Island, but uh, just some scattered snow showers here for the southwest interiors. Could start out, that could be even mixed rain and snow showers with the southwesterly flow, but uh, there is colder air coming in on that uh, wind flow wrapping around behind the front here. So look for rain to move into Kodiak Island, a chance of, say for the uh, state airport there, otherwise uh, better chances up like Iliamna, Kamishak Bay toward Iliamna on down. Maybe to King Salmon once that wind flow turns around. Uh, could see some rain moving through this evening. Uh, chance of showers along the North Gulf Coast. Really light whatever does occur. Dry for the Copper River Basin. And uh, Tanana Valley, look for increasing chances of moisture either in the form of rain or snow. And uh, looks like after about 3 a.m., a chance of uh, rain or snow, freezing rain, or some type of mixed precipitation shows up in the forecast here for the uh, Anchorage area, actually par probably from Kenai northward into the uh, Madnuska, Susitna Valley areas. Otherwise, dry conditions, Prince William Sound on to the east. No change for the southeast coast there. Strong high pressure just to the east keeps it dry, variably cloudy, and not too bad temperature-wise as well. Otherwise, out to the west, another big storm rolling in brings back gale force to storm force winds late tonight into the far western Aleutians. And we'll see that uh, drives a front eastward a little bit here, just uh, not quite making it to Kiska. Strong southwest winds behind it, even stronger winds in advance of it. Again, storm, storm warnings out for the western Aleutians tomorrow with gales progressing eastward. Pretty dry here, but uh, southwest winds uh, on the light side actually could see some clearing with light winds on Alaska Nikolsky on over to uh, Falls Pass. Nelson Lagoon area, a chance of uh, some scattered rain or snow showers in Bristol Bay as uh, somewhat higher pressure builds up to the west. So Cuscombe Valley not looking too bad. A few lingering snow showers along the Alaska Range and uh, something of a trough right through here. So snow showers in the Kilbrook Mountains becoming a more general area of snow up across uh, Norton Sound on northward through this area. Again, winter storm warning out through tomorrow and tomorrow night due to the uh, heavy snowfall expected and winds coming down though in this area, but uh, snow continues up on the central and eastern Arctic coast, a break over the Brooks Range into the central Tanana Valley. Chance of snow there for the uh, eastern Tanana Valley to possibly mixed conditions in the 40 mile country and then cooling temperatures uh, as this front moves through a little bit there, but probably the moisture will be over by the time it cools enough to rule out any more rain or freezing, or s freezing rain or uh, mixed precipitation. Looks like rain into Prince William Sound, Whittier, maybe Valdez, Cordova definitely, and a weak warm front brings a chance of rain eastward to Yakutat uh, in toward maybe Elfin Cove, on down to Sitka, kind of iffy if it reaches Juneau or not. Uh, definitely dry, partly sunny, on down to the south. 
and moving ahead, first day of the weekend, that system is off to the east, down to the south, uh, not quite out of the uh, forecast here. Still uh, look for some snow showers possibly there for the uh, Heidelberg, Annette, Metlakala areas. Less of a chance for Klawak early on maybe, but that will be moving out. Winds turn northerly and increase to about 25 knots across all of the inside waters. Uh, windier, drier conditions. Mostly sunny here along the North Gulf Coast with pretty light winds, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, southwest flow, strong southwest flow, so bring the blowing snow back into St. Lawrence Island, colder air, uh, comparatively colder to what's uh, in advance of the front here, uh, bearing some numerous snow showers into the west coast areas, more steady snow out in advance of the front. Again, heaviest amounts up along and south of the Brooks Range. Snow and blowing snow uh, picking up pretty good there for the central and western Arctic coast as that front lifts northward. It'll start out pretty windy and uh, snowy there for the northwest uh, coastal areas and then that'll improve somewhat as the front lifts northward and conditions become a little more showery. Narrow band of rain right across Saint, uh, the St. Paul area in St. George extends on down into the uh, west central Aleutians, dry to the west dry to the east, partly sunny on Alaska Nikolsky. Should be a really nice day for Kodiak Island with just uh, fairly light winds, uh, maybe 10 to 20, gust 25, although there are gale warnings out for the barren islands uh, due to the enough gradient there with those northwest winds. Anyway, moving on to temperatures. For the Panhandle today, all in the mid to upper 30s, 37 Kowak, same thing at Wrangell. 36 in Juneau, 35 there, Yakutat, Sitka, almost 40 degrees, not quite. Cordova, 34, 33 Valdez, 32 in Portage, 31 at Seward, uh, mostly in the teens there, Copper River Basin, Gunsight at 16, 25 McCarthy. Upper teens there for Tanana and Delta, Fairbanks pushed up to 21, 20s here, Northern Cook Inlet into the Susitna Valley, mid 30s with 35 at Homer, 44 at Kodiak, lower 40s here for the uh, Aleutian Range there on up to King Salmon, all of the Alaska Peninsula. Up to the north, uh, temperatures rising above zero, big rise in temperatures uh, throughout the day today from last night here over the interior. Still six below at Fort Yukon, well below zero up along the eastern Arctic coast, warming into the teens to 28 at Shishmaref, 31 at Nome, 35 Unalakleet, still uh, Eight degrees there at Caltag, but uh, mid 30s now across the Yukon Cusquam Delta areas. Nine at Savunga and Gamble. With the Pribilofs mid to upper 30s, 40s from Atka with 41, right up the Alaska Peninsula, 43, Falls Pass and Unalaska, and then cooling off a little bit out to the west. Lows for tonight, uh, looking something like this. Uh, obviously, with a mild southerly flow here, overnight lows are going to be. Pretty mild, especially Bristol Bay, uh, all above freezing, mid to upper 30s, back to the Alaska Peninsula, and then uh, warming into the 20s there for the Seward Peninsula. Coldest up here over the northeast now, uh, teens to lower 20s for the Tanana Valley. Copper River Basin staying on the chilly side, but uh, upper 20s for south central Alaska, 20s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow into the lower 40s, areas of south central Alaska, possibly as warm as 45 for the Seldovia area, lower 40s Kodiak. Really mild now into the central interior, west central interior, temperatures running 35 to 40. And even the Arctic coast, all areas rising above zero, mid 30s for the Pribilofs, near 40 for the Aleutians. Flying weather late tonight, early tomorrow morning, front moving eastward, a narrow band of IFR there from the southern slopes of the Brooks Range right down into Bristol Bay in the Aleutian Range with marginal VFR Gulf of Alaska coming into Cook Inlet and a big swath of IFR across the southwest interior up to St. Lawrence Island, a break and then more IFR entering the scene here out west which will mostly push off to the northeast but edge its way eastward to that location. VFR, central Aleutians, uh, Fox Islands up to the Pribilofs, just marginal VFR tomorrow afternoon out west with uh, IFR slowly moving through throughout the day here for Northern Cook Inlet, Manuska Valley into the western uh, Copper River Basin areas. VFR continues for the Panhandle. Passes, Anatovic, IFR at times and Adigan as well. Those conditions on the southern entrance of both passes. 
Lake Clark and Merrill improving throughout the day as the moisture pushes eastward, so I'll call it IFR becoming VFR. Same forecast for rainy, windy uh, IFR. Again, lowest conditions, southern approaches of both windy Isabel and um, in Tasta, though, not too bad, gradually possibly becoming marginal in the afternoon. Tanita, though, IFR, Portage IFR, Chilkoot and White uh, VFR. And for the freezing levels, uh, two to 6,000 feet here coming northward, but shifting eastward as well. Uh, so it's right along the coast and then cooling off back to the west again. And for icing, first band of moisture right through here. So areas of from Kodiak Island northeastward into the 40 mile country there above about 3,000 feet. Another batch here, a little more widespread up to the north and northwest. Really narrows out as it drops down along the Alaska Peninsula. And then some more icing with the next storm coming into the far western Aleutians and Bering Sea. And the winds aloft, uh, that's the low center there, the upper level low that brings 140 knot wind max at 33,000 feet. So with the next storm they'll be pushing in out there. A little bit of ridging and a break here on toward the coast. A trough swinging northeastward here into the interior. A nice ridge uh, over the Gulf of Alaska into the Yukon. And for three, 9,000 feet, big winds out here to the west with the next storm, 50 to 75 knots and uh, 20 to 30 though into Bristol Bay. Pretty good breeze here through the interior, as high as 50 knots there up over the northern upper Yukon Valley, but only 10 knots down toward the North Gulf Coast, 15 for the Panhandle, 3,000 feet uh, showing that sharp direction change here across the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coast where it'll be easterly, southwest 35 for the Yukon Delta, and the strong winds here from Atka on out to Shimia, 40 to 65 knots, lighter for the Panhandle, and uh, turbulence, occasional light to isolated moderate chop here, mechanical type stuff here, the Aleutian Range Kodiak on up into Kamishak Bay and the uh, lee side of the Western Alaska Range there. Otherwise, a main area here, quite a swath, moderate chop uh, from the northern interior all the way back out to the Western Aleutians where severe turbulence is a little more likely, below about 4,000 feet. And after Stargazer, I'll be back to look at the Ice Edge and the marine forecasts. Venus misses Mars by that much. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. The planets of love and war are up in the evening sky tonight. I'm talking Venus and Mars. These are the two planets that can come closest to the Earth, and they have a lot in common. They're both round, rocky objects that circle relatively close to the sun. Relatively, at least compared to the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But when you look closer at them, they present some startling differences. For instance, Mars might be a good place to personally visit someday, while Venus, well, you'd die pretty much instantly on the surface. And we have something really cool because this week, Venus will appear close to Mars in the sky. Let's go check them out. Okay. We have our sky set to February 6th at 7.30 p.m. facing southwest. You can see the two planets, Venus and Mars, about a third of the way up in the sky. But which is which? <laughs> it's easy. Venus is the really, really, really bright one. It's suspiciously bright. It looks like a plane or a UFO coming in for a landing. Venus is about 46 million miles from Earth this week and getting closer each night. Mars is the fainter and perhaps redder looking one up and to the left of Venus. It was a lot brighter back in 2016 when it was a lot closer to the Earth. This week it will be over 175 million miles away and getting farther. Right now, Venus and Mars look to be about five degrees apart in the sky. But let's go back in time, back two months ago, to see how these planets looked in December. It's now December 6th at 7.30 p.m. facing southwest. Venus and Mars are still in the sky, but they're in different positions. Look, they're much more separated. In fact, they're almost 21 degrees apart. This is what made the planet so fascinating to the ancient stargazers. They seem to wander across the background stars. 
let's move time forward and see how this plays out. Here is December 15th, December 24th, January 2nd. Hey, look, there's a waxing crescent moon wandering through our planet pair. Here's January 11th, January 20th, January 29th, and back to February 6th again. Wow, those planets are moving. And as the days continue, Venus will turn tail and head away from Mars, and they will spread out once more. We're going to visit Venus first. As we approach, we can see that this planet is about 7,500 miles in diameter, almost the same size as the Earth. It's often called our sister planet for this reason. However, that is where the similarities end, because under a thick blanket of carbon dioxide clouds lies a battered, sweltering surface. Robotic crafts recorded surface temperatures of about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the air pressure under all these clouds would be so intense that they'd squish you flat. I don't feel so good. And finally, when it rains on Venus, oh no, it rains sulfuric acid. So that would leave any visitor to Venus like James over there, a melted, squished, acidy pile of goop. Okay, I think we've shown them enough for Venus. What do you have to say we go to Mars? Great idea. Mars is a much smaller planet, only about 4,200 miles wide. It's much farther from the sun, so it's a lot colder. Although our robotic visitors to Mars have occasionally recorded surface temperatures in the 70s, most of the time it's well below zero. And at night, oh man, watch out, it can drop to minus 70. Still, out of the two planets, Mars is a better place for humans to go visit. And someday we may even establish a colony on Mars. So this week, look for brilliant Venus near ruby red Mars in the evening sky. They won't appear any closer than this until September and October. When you look up and see them, you can imagine flying there and standing on the broiling surface of Venus. Or being the first person on Mars and colonizing an entire planet. It's all there when you keep looking up. Welcome back with today's uh, sea ice analysis. In retreat from what it was early in the week, Sunday and Monday, it was down to about 40 miles away from St. Paul and uh, continuing northward with the strong southerly winds uh, into Bristol Bay and the uh, forecast in the next four or five days, again with a, another big push of warm air and south winds coming in, it'll continue to retreat back to the north and northeast. Moving on to uh, coastal water forecasts here, for the southeast coast, northwest 15 to 20 knots for the entire coastline there, except west 15 up on the north coast. Seas running 7 to 10 feet. Kind of light variable winds here through the inside waters, uh, becoming south tomorrow afternoon from the Lynn Canal. But then on Saturday, those will swing around to the north and pick up to 25 knots with higher gusts as higher pressure builds in. And those northerly winds will be increasing into the afternoon to 25 knots all the way down to Stevens Passage. And small craft advisories all along the coast here for the wind speeds, 25 to 30 knots with gales out of the northwest on the south side. For Prince William Sound, variable 15, southwest 15 Cook Inlet, up to 25 knots there from the Forelands on down to uh, Kamishak Bay. And then westerly at 30 knots here for the Barren Islands, southwest 20 to 25 from the North Gulf Coast, southwest 25 Kodiak Island. And then for Saturday, light variable winds for northern Cook Inlet becoming west 20, south of the Forelands. Small craft advisories for Kamishak Bay, northwesterly gales for the Barrens, North Gulf Coast, northwest just under gale force at about 30 knots, and even lighter for Prince William Sound, west 25, east side of Kodiak Island. Bristol Bay, southwest 15, light winds here, all the way down uh, the Bering Sea side of the peninsula out of the west, 20 knots from Cape Sarachev turns southwesterly as you approach Sitkanak. And for Saturday, uh, not, not a lot of change though, but uh, increase here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula up to 30 knots, higher gusts uh, through the passes, southwest 20 Bristol Bay, west southwest 20 knots from Sitkanak on westward. And 20 to 25 knot winds there for Unalaska Island turned southerly from about Nikolsky and gradually increased to gale force for Adak and Atka tomorrow, right out of the south. ADAC westward, storm warning, southerlies 50 to 55 knots. Uh, you'll see big
big increase later tonight out west there, and that'll be pushing eastward. And then for Saturday, mostly southwest, uh, except here in the eastern, may be more of a uh, south-southwest instead of just southwest, but uh, 25 to 35 knot winds. Gales definitely minimum there for the central Aleutians and small craft advisories back to the west. And then for the west coast tomorrow, small craft of, or brisk wind advisories here north of Nunavak Island become gales for St. Lawrence Island. Almost a storm there for St. Matthew Island and southwest 30 with 16 foot seas for the Perloffs. Gales the next day there for St. Paul and St. George. Seas building to 20 feet. Storm warnings here west of St. Matthew Island. Gales to the east, south 45 back in across St. Lawrence Island. And for the Arctic coast, Bruce Gwynn advisories east side for easterlies 25 to 30. And then 30 knot northeasterlies here for the central coast down to Cape Beaufort. 20 knots there to Cape Thompson. West increasing to 25 knots in the afternoon on down toward uh, the Bering Strait. And then those turn southeast with the next system rolling northward there. Southeast 30, northeast 30, gales on the western Arctic coast, and then dropping back to northeast 20 for the eastern Beaufort Sea. And for tonight, we've got uh, this low tracking from about this position currently, northeastward there to the across the Western Brooks Range, winter storm warning, snow, blowing snow, uh, heavy amounts. Uh, in fact, that winter storm warning's out for until, well, through tomorrow night for as much as 18 inches of snow, heaviest on the southern slopes of the mountains there. Snow blowing snow, Arctic coast. This front gradually moving eastward, warmer conditions, mixed precipitation, chance of freezing rain, northern Cook Inlet later tonight, more likely after three, breaking out to showers. Next big storm out west there, pushes northeastward and pushing the front with it. This system moves eastward, a break, more snow up to the northwest, and a lot more. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.